Hey, left, right out. We've got a lot of big news. I'm going to go into a little bit of economics and I, something that I talk about that I haven't heard too many people talk about, which is the water crisis that's going on and it's burgeoning right now in the Southwest, or actually it's not even, it's all the West, all the Rocky Mountain states, all the Western states, roughly 40 million people affected by it. And uh, there's not too much in the news about it. And I've been ta- I mentioned it probably a few months ago and I've been talking about it with fam- you know, some of my family that, that uh, um, are around the area uh, about it uh, over the past number of years. But uh, now it's really coming to a crisis. So um, actually, let's just hit, hit start there. So this is, you know, because nobody talks about this. So we're going to go, well, I'm going to get into it. Because um, now we're starting to see some national articles. But if you're not familiar with in <clears throat> the four corner states, California, Nevada, Wyoming, Utah, or Utah is one of the four corner states. Anyway. Um, parts of Idaho in that that those regions call you know all four corner states Colorado Utah New Mexico Arizona they rely on or in varying degrees um, the water from the, that the basin that goes in the Colorado River there's a number of reservoirs that supply water generate power you know it goes from Lake Powell Mead um, you got Mojave to Havasu down to you know smaller you know all the way down to Mexico right there you know Lake Martinez down uh, on the border near Yuma but anyway Lake Mead and Lake Powell not only the Glen Canyon Dam and the Hoover Dam provide uh, they're a huge power source for a, a lot of people but they also provide water for um, whether it be farming ranching or just drinking water to you know uh, millions of people right well, here's the deal. So the la- over the last year, of course, you know, the mega drought. Well, it's not only the mega drought, but the amount of people that are influxed in the states that rely on this is out, you know, enormous, and it's just gotten worse over the last couple of years. So the uh, demand on the water is incredible, and the replenishment of the water has been dwindling. So you have places like Lake Powell right now that are lowest they've ever been. Lake Mead, the lowest it's ever been. Since, I mean, since they filled these things, since they have put the dams in, and um, and I've been talking about it because, well, I fish a lot, and I, I, I'm intimate with these reservoirs, um, and I've lived in the Rocky Mountain states um, majority of my life outside of uh, some Marine Corps and then what I'm doing right now. But um, but this this thing is, is, is something that we need to pay attention to. So there's a number, a number of articles recently, people that are, you know, raising the bell, government officials, in particular, you know, states like Arizona that are, that are talking about this because once these get to a certain level one you can't generate power so there's uh one of the cleanest the the cleanest power source and uh is offline so they've been talking about that for you know it's been on their radar for a number of months now to the water uh the water demand on there we're getting to the point where we're accessing pump stations so if you're not familiar there's different ways they pump water out of the reservoir there's an uh you know, usually they have multiple different pump systems, one for like a higher level water than they have like a, I don't know, uh, I don't know the terminology, but there's usually a couple of them. There's a low water one, uh, you know, for emergency purposes. Well, we're already at that at Lake Mead. In fact, somebody just posted a picture. And if you go to, there's a number of art, there's a, starting to become more and more articles, but there's a picture from some locals there on Mead that shows the, the, the number one pump on there. And that thing has never been above water since they started filling it. And now you can actually see it. it it's sitting out of the water. So now they had to change pumps. Um, so that's an incredible development. And these things, this is not going away. Um, there is a good snowpack, but it takes years and years of over 100% snowpack for these things, these reservoirs to fill up. So I don't know what they're doing. I know, and it hasn't been reported on there, that they've draining certain reservoirs in Colorado, or not totally draining them, but they're down to all-time lows, in order to fill Lake Powell or try to you know offset some of the, the pressures off Lake Powell. And some of that water is actually coming from Flaming Gorge and Blue Mesa and some of these other areas. If you're not familiar with that, you don't need to be, but they're all in that basin. But this is going to put pressure on one water, you know, water costs, you know, and power costs over there. So not only you have now we're going to go into this other anecdotal um, stuff that I've been seeing, but not, not only do you have food prices skyrocketing, but you're going to have energy uh, costs and basic utility costs skyrocketing as well, especially in this particular area of the country. Um, but let's go into the other thing. So I'm in the supermarket, walk around 
and normally I get like a 60 pack of eggs because I like to eat a lot of eggs and I uh, so I buy them in like more of a bulk sense but even though it doesn't matter what you're doing but it went from remember I was talking about this it was like you used to be able to get 60 eggs for like six um, 70 something or whatever and now it went up to 10 and I was like you know it was a pretty big deal it skyrocketed to 15 bucks Fifteen dollars, and I understand that there is an avian flu outbreak that's happened over the last six months. That originated, I believe, in the Midwest and in Indiana, Ohio. Now I just saw an article that in Montana they have it in the wild turkey population. There's been some in Wyoming farms. There's been some um, throughout the country. Now it's spread. There's over, you know, I think twelve million birds that have been killed. But that's not, you know, it's going everywhere. So watch out for your turkey prices in November. But anyway, that's affecting the hen, you know, the hen. Um, uh, recruitment or whatnot, that's, so that's affecting your eggs. But I mean, that's coupled with our monetary heroin that we're on, uh, that is the real purveyor of this. Uh, so you see that. Then, last two days, last 48 hours, I watched diesel prices go from uh, where I'm at, it was like 479, which is already astronomical. We've been talking about all of a sudden it pumps up yesterday to 499, it's like five dollars a gallon. This morning, I wake up, I go to uh, the store it's 515 already so within a span of less than 48 hours we're up like 50 cents almost on a gallon of diesel um so this is this is and you know what you know thing oh well, i don't drive a diesel or whatever but diesel is an input cost in your freight which gets the goods to you from the ports because we're still importing everything uh, essentially so we are in the worst i've never seen anything like this in this country and we know, you know, we know the root cause, but we know these other nodes that are going to it, and we can we can identify those. And and, and it's just it's unbelievable what we're what we're seeing right now. Now what? No, we go to the people, the purveyors of a lot of this. That you know, the first domino, the Fed, the you know, the central banking system here that we have. These guys that keep talking about. Uh, well, their little inflation indicator that they axe out energy and all this stuff. That's still up like five point two percent again. Um, so you look at what's going on in Wall Street. So you have real super, you know, huge little sell off or huge little sell offs, and then short rallies. We had a short recovery yesterday, which you know I wanted to get short again. I didn't. I know I'm going all over the place, uh, but anyway, uh, what I'm getting at is you know guys like Powell and these other people are out there, and they're you know saying, oh well, inflation's a big deal, blah 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 blah. They raise it a quarter point. They haven't. They haven't even started QT. And we are feeling the effects of all this, and they are waiting to the next meeting. Is it, if if they recognize it's a problem, and they know it's a problem, and they talk about it as a problem, why don't they do? Why are we? Why are we waiting to the next FOMC meeting to raise interest rates, to start QT, to run the balance sheet off, to get some of this excess liquidity or this money out of there, instead of allowing these spe allowing speculators or whatever? Or you're you're allowing the flow of this excess money, this printed money to go into these real assets or to, um, you know, pretty much, um, what do you call it when you dilute real earnings? Because, you know, the, the average person's salary is not staying, keeping up with these price increases. This monetary phenomenon, this monetary heroin that we're on is, is it created all these discongruities in, in markets. We don't even have a real market in this country. Everything is driven by a socialistic system from this manipulated through a central banking you know central bank and because they're the ones that price money they're the ones that are backstopping the debt when it comes to the government spending and their budgets they're the ones that are doing it i mean we got re, uh, you know a bunch of idiots up there anyway look at, you know let's get we can get on something else i mean i was listening to that speech biden gave and he's just tripping all over himself i can't even believe it and i wish somebody would just help that man i wish they would just help him because I cannot stand this stuff. I cannot believe this country's got to this point. Like, this is ridiculous. This guy can't even speak. I feel sorry for him. I don't even want to attack him. I just wish he could go retire and enjoy his last bit of his life. You know, maybe, you know, whatever, hanging out with his grandkids, going fishing off of Delaware, whatever he likes to do. But for God's sakes, when we're in this kind of turmoil, why haven't anybody, I, you know, I granted, I don't want Kamala Harris up there. The, She's like at a fifth grade reading level, but I mean, out of sympathy for this man and for the country, I just can't not, you know, it's hard to sit there and watch him. It really is. And I, you know, I hate to say it.
And there's a lot of things I, I don't like about it. I think he's one of the most corrupt individuals in the history of the Senate. And his family, his son in particular, is one of the most despicable human beings, uh, you know, that's in a public light. But in this regard, I just can't, you, you're watching the deterioration of an individual and you wish that somebody would help him out instead of operating him like a puppet. Um, but anyway, I like to, you know, I like to stay on the economic side. Let's pull up what we, what we have here because in the mark, the markets are, um, I've been playing, I'm pretty, I, I kind of get lucky, but I've been operating off the short side. That's the only reason I'm still able to make a living because a little bit of money that I have in the market that I've been playing on the short side has really paid off. And then I wish I'd have got short yesterday because remember I told you I took some profits because I was looking for that short that short covering at rally that we got yesterday, but I was doing something else. I couldn't get back in. Um, so that was, that sucked for me, but, uh, but I still have some shorts. I still have some volatility and it's been paying off fairly well. And in fact, I might, uh, I want to hold on. I kind of want to roll my short option or they're, they're not shorts. They're not real shorts. Like you would in the market, go borrow shares. They're options that are, um, um, counter or inversely correlated to the S&P 500 and also correlated to volatility. So I've got those and I'm going to roll some of them over uh, to uh, further out the dated months because once we, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen when if we actually get some um, QT or whatnot. I don't know what the Fed's going to do because, oh, that's the other thing. GDP number came in 1.2% uh, in the negative. And, and of course, we know that number is, you know, highly manipulated because you got a you got a deflator in there which is based off of you know their malfeasance and in, in mathematics uh of uh of calculating uh price price increases uh with hedonics and all this other jazz that's the other thing so we don't even when we look at these price increases i know i'm jumping all over the place but this is this is this is important so if you look at these price increases that you see at the store right now over the years we haven't really noticed it but we have noticed that you know shrinkflation what they call it or uh, quality de degradation that is a form of inflation too so you go and you're getting whatever half an ounce less of chips or whatever for the same price you know that's you know significant but you don't really pay attention to that or you go and the quality your of whatever you get is down a little bit which i noticed that over the years it's like you buy something the thing breaks like you you know pretty easy but um, but you're paying the same price for what we used to get high quality. I mean, it's hard to, cause it, you're like the frog in the boiling pot to really see it. But now we're seeing the punctuated event of, uh, of inflation, the real symptoms of it, real price increases, not just on the capital side, but in the consumer prices. And it's really affecting people. And, um, I mean, I'm, even if you sweep like people, Oh, I had somebody, I was talking to somebody about this and they're like, Oh, we'll get, you know, the Senate and the Congress next Next to Trump. I was like, that's not going to do it, man. These guys are inept too. There's only a handful of guys that really understand the economic economics and any uh, consequence that are up there. I can name them on the on my fingers and my hand. Um, but either way, they you know it will be a little bit better. But uh, um, but it's not going to change anything. We you know not only do they not understand the problem and will they actually rein it? And I doubt it. But they don't even most of these people don't even realize that a lot of the times the monetary policies they're you know they don't understand monetary policy to begin with. But the monetary effects of decisions made through monetary policy are typically not typically not uh, felt within the you know when they're initially made. They're usually one to two quarters you know um, early. I mean you fill them one to two quarters down the line. But um, so I don't know you know you have to have a severe we need a res severe recession. We need them to do something. We need them to get into neutral rate. But anyway, I was—I know I, I jumped all over the place because I felt like that was a shrinkflation, quality degradation uh, is something to, that needs to be talked about because we've been seeing that over the years. And um, we've lived in an era where we've had inflation ever since the 70s pretty much. And we've been able to export it or oversupply to uh, nullify the effects the symptoms of price are in. but now we can't do that right now we're seeing the breakdown of this import system you have china locking down you have the russia ukraine war that's really affecting it's it's creating a, a bifurcation in the world of trade and th that always baffles me or that has been baffling we're going to keep supplying ukraine with arms for 
I mean, I know what initially and what you've been propagandized is that, hey, that's a great thing, right? That's going to, we're, we're going to fight the, Ru we're going to help them fight the Russians. We're going to do this. We are prolonging the war. You're causing more death and destruction instead of what we should be doing as the leaders of the free world or was the free world at one time, the ideal of the free world. We should be setting them down and talk and, and inking out an agreement in this thing now get peace back on the table and get back to where we can um, have a little more stable global economic system another news uh, with that regard russia has come out with the intent to back the ruble this is a big deal this is a big deal let me see if i can pull the article up if i didn't lose it already but this is this is a big deal for russia and over there, I mean, despite what our media has been telling you, it's not that bad for them. Like, maybe they can't get a few things that they imported from us, but, like, the gas prices, the basic general, you know, getting by stuff, is the prices have actually decreased in some instances. Uh, but you got the Kremlin confirms intentions to back ruble with golden commodities. That's what we should be doing. Why the hell aren't we doing it? The petrodollar is falling apart. It was like a pseudo backing of our, our, our currency. That's falling apart. We've put this wedge in with these sorority girls that are running the government, and they're really screwing us all over. And it's and it's this generation, it's the next generation, and I don't know, I don't know, you know, who knows? There's so much things that can happen to uh, um, to us. I, you know, it's really hard to uh, really hard to really put a path forward to fix this without you know having to go through some pain. Because we've staved it off, we kicked the can so far down the road. Now you know the pain is going to be immense. It's like the patient has meta you know everything's metastasized. Now we really have to kick them on the chemo, and uh, and it's going to hurt, man. But uh, but where is the? That was what I was getting. Where's the Fed? Like why are we waiting around? Why haven't they just let's preemptively at least? I mean, granted, you need to pop interest rates, Fed fund rates, significantly higher to get to a neutral rate. You need a QT. You need to stop monetizing the mortgage mortgages. You need to stop monetizing the government debt. You need to cut it out now. I mean, it needed to stop months ago, years ago. We should have stopped this years ago. But let's say we did it anyway over this COVID, you know, deal. We need to we need to stop this, you know, a long time ago. In fact, they should have at least either held the money supply constant as much as they possibly can, or decrease the money supply in relation to the supply of goods. You know this whole print money like this is gonna we got a free lunch is just ridiculous. But anyway, why are they waiting? Why are they letting us feel this pain even more so? Are they they're trying to break? They're waiting for something to significantly break because things have broke. The supply, the pricing mechanism in the market, the supply chain is broke. It's broke significant, more significant than we've ever seen in this country, in this nation's history, I think, or in modern you know modern history or what we call a modernized econ economic system with you know global. Uh, um, significantly global trade like like we, we we had so what are they waiting for why haven't they you know i'd take the half point if they need to do something they needed to do something where we wait until next week now like what are they doing playing golf i mean these guys don't have much to do there's only certain things there's only so much they can do so it's like make a decision like i remember just a few months ago like well we haven't even talked about talking about like what does that even mean we're over here in the real world um you know, having to strap, you know, here's the other thing. So, you know, it might be an excuse for them to reverse sooner than they're already going to reverse their uh, supposed QT, you know, because the CPI, you know, it measures certain things, but here's what's going to happen. So as, you know, prices continue rising, um, people aren't going to be buying, you know, they're going to strap their boots, they're going to cut out excess. So you're going to have certain prices that are going to be, you know, either stable or maybe even decrease at the time. Like certain services but you're gonna have like commodity real resources real things of need are going to continue to go up if nothing's done about it and that's just because people with a finite amount of money even though there's you know a lot of money they're gonna have to select what they they they, they spend their money because their wages aren't aren't keeping up with this but anyway i'm going to leave it there because we're almost 20 minutes i have to keep this under 20 minutes uh like subscribe i appreciate it talk to you later